hello everybody and welcome back to the channel and today we are doing my top five books of the week from what i've read and uh i'm quite shocked that the f <laughs> by the fact that i had the flash on this list my honorable mentions uh would be the dc versus vampires all out war number one and she hulk but i need to do a video on she hulk because that series ain't it <laughs> it's, it's not for me anyway so here we go with the Flash 784. So the, this is a Dark Crisis tie-in. What's interesting is I did not like the last tie-in from the Flash. You know, they went back uh, into like different, you know, worlds and stuff to uh, find their Barry Allen. And they're finding like obviously alternate reality Barry Allens. But what's weird is um, when you get to Wally West, he, uh, he approaches that world's Barry Allen. And he, it, to him everything looks you know like normal but to that world's barry allen he looks like reverse flash and it's just intense and by the end of it the other uh flash i can't remember his name what is it kid flash or kid quit i don't remember i'm not very called up with you know the flash i don't i don't read it or anything like that but what was interesting is it's like it made made him feel like this was home this was correct this is how the world was supposed to be and so i was like man that's a what a way to end this tie-in like holy crap so what's going to happen are they going to find barry allen is wally going to be able to stop barry from beating him into a bloody pulp but yeah in case y'all don't know though dark crisis has actually got its full name revealed as dark crisis on infinite earths so it's a sequel but yeah so that's my number five pick is the Flash. Next up is the other Dark Crisis, <clears throat> Dark Crisis book with Dark Crisis Young Justice, The Wrath of Wonder Girl. This one has me a little freaked out. Are there like a bunch of Cassies? Because she's like everywhere. I mean, she is everywhere. And the end le left off on a quite a big cliffhanger with some villains and stuff. And it's just made me want to watch the Young Justice cartoon. So I think I'm actually going to start on that after this video. But, uh, well, y'all won't be seeing this video until, uh, Sunday? Yeah, Sunday. Uh, I'll have already started. This, this is already recorded. But, uh, yeah, uh, it's really cool. I'm, I'm really enjoying the whole Young Justice stuff. I, sh I really should have already just started watching Young Justice. So I'm gonna get on that. But this book is pretty neat. Uh, I like the idea that Cassie has talked Sissy into helping her finally. And then, uh, where Tim and Superboy and, you know, uh, Impulse is at, uh, they're meeting with, like, this weird version of the Justice League where they're homophobic, racist, and sexist, and the whole situation is just weird. Batman tells Tim he's going through a phase and that he's meant to be with Stephanie. Like, Impulse said he saw cracks when they were coming to this world, so this, this version of Earth is just kind of crazy and i liked i liked the book as a whole i liked the first issue as well but i'm i'm really enjoying the dark crisis event so far but that is issue two of six for that and then at number three we, how ironic is grim number three so this book is going to be special i just feel it so what makes it so unique is that like what happens when a reaper swaps between life and death uh it and it creates like a kind of a void kind of a uh like a weird event where things aren't as they should and so another reaper i guess he's called the end has to like put balance back so he's there to stop that but what also happens is if you find out death himself is missing and you have to go on a journey to find them. That's what happens in this book. It's crazy. And the artwork is good. Stephanie. Whew, oh God, I'm tired. Stephanie Phillips is such a good writer. In case you don't know, she's on the Harley Quinn book as well. And I really enjoy the Harley Quinn book. It's fun. I prefer this. though. Her writing for this is better than what it is in Harley Quinn. And that's not saying that the Har like her writing for Harley Quinn is bad. But this is good. So this is my number three. And number two is Nightwing 94. Uh, guys, I swear, I haven't forgotten to start doing the Nightwing reviews, I, I promise. Uh, uh, Nightwing 94 had left me on a cliffhanger. I hated it. If something happens to the mayor, 
Um, I'm rioting. Uh, I'm going to stand outside uh, Tom Taylor's house with a boombox, singing uh, or playing "God Hates Us" by Vince Sevenfold if she dies. Uh, because I promise you, I will. I will cry. I will cry. Don't don't make me cry, Taylor. Don't make me cry. You don't want that. You don't want the crying on your hands. Um, but yeah, that is Nightwing ninety four. It's it's a good issue, guys. Pick it up. And of course, at number one, very predictable, Gunslinger Spawn number ten. How could it not be my number one? We get a scene where Spawn and Gunslinger have the handshake from Predator, or they beat the crap at each other, and they're practically like, "Yo, we're bros now, broski. Let's go hang out and and kill all the angels and demons." And I like how this issue, you know, leads up to. Uh, the Scorched, number one. So, like, if you read all of Gunslinger and, and, and you get to this issue, start The Scorched, number one, right after. You'll you'll feel right at home. But, uh, yeah, it was a good action-packed issue. I actually will be reviewing this next. Well, not next. i got to review the Dark Crisis Superman book. If we got to get on the Dark Crisis train. Anyways, guys, that's it for my top five video. I uh, hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.